the channel once again guys today is actually going to be an interesting topic that we are going to discuss that is the absorption and utilization of iron in our body right which is an important topic uh, uh, in, namely in the subjects called biochemistry physiology and in the clinical side it's uh, very very important to understand the mucosal block theory in in the field of medicine right because we have uh, iron deficiency anemia we have hemocytosis hemochromatosis uh, so all these diseases related to iron right so now let's see what is the requirement and how much it's required uh, uh, for uh, different ages so if we come to that uh, before that we'll actually have a thumb rule that uh, it states that that how much ever iron you take only 10% of that will be absorbed by your body suppose tomorrow morning you take 100 grams of iron and uh, uh, you think that 100 grams would be absorbed you are absolutely wrong only 10% that is 10 10 grams of that iron uh, uh, how much have you have taken of that only 10% will be absorbed that is here you will only your body will only take 10 10 grams into its into you all right so that uh, based on that the yellow color thing which i have written is that uh, how much your body requires and the blue color one is uh, how much you should take it through diet so if you are uh, if you are a child you should take 5 mg in case of infants and male adults you should take 10 mg in females you should take 20 mg and in pregnant uh, females they should take 40 mg this is the rda values right uh, if you see uh, this 40 mg it's 10% is actually 4 mg right so that's uh, actually being the rule of uh, uh, the uh, above mentioned thumb rule now there's a question here that uh, why in last trimester we actually require more iron and the uh, uh, intake of iron should be strict and uh, it should be you know it should be strictly monitored so uh, the reason is that uh, uh, the excess iron that the, the uh, fetus gets in its last trimester is actually being utilized after its birth Uh, so what the fetus does is the excess iron is being stored in, stored in its body and after its birth the newborn child uh, the only way uh, uh, you will feed a newborn child is through mother's milk right but the mother's milk is uh, is actually deficient in the iron content so the uh, newborn child now utilizes uh, the stored uh, forms of iron in its body for its uh daily purposes daily requirements right so that's why it's very very important especially in the last trimester now coming to the mucosal block theory which actually states how iron is being absorbed in the body right now basically we have actually two types of iron uh, we have fe3 plus which is the ferric form and the fe2 plus which is the ferrous form so fe3 plus is actually uh, more seen in the plant based sources of iron and fe2 plus is actually seen in the animal based sources of iron all right so uh, this uh, that, that but uh, if if there's a question like which is actually being absorbed by the uh, mucosal cells the answer is fe2 plus is actually absorbed by the mucosal cells not fe3 plus form right that's why uh, uh, the any reducing agent taken with uh, iron suppose we we eat something called this uh, we eat some green leafy vegetable which contains fe3 plus if we take uh, uh, like uh, citric acid uh, fruits like citrus fruits which contains vitamin c and uh, the gastric juice which contains hcl all these are actually re- reducing uh, agents which reduce fe3 plus to fe2 plus and uh, hence they can increase the chance of absorption of iron or the bio availability of iron okay so uh, this uh, yeah anyway like fe3 plus uh, we have a mechanism to convert fe3 plus to fe2 plus uh, okay there's a special enzyme called uh, we'll see here so suppose we take fe3 plus and this this special enzyme called the ferric reductase this is actually present in the apical surface of the mucosal cells uh, especially in the duodenum So this is present. So this Fe3 plus in the uh, lumen of the uh, duodenum has been converted to Fe2 plus by this enzyme called ferric reductase. Now uh, we know that Fe2 plus can easily be absorbed. So uh, we we usually have a transporter, right? So this transporter, because iron is a metal and it's now present in the, its divalent form, that is 
V2 plus, right? So we call the transport as divalent metal transport. But uh, there are many uh, subclasses for that. So uh, this is actually called as divalent metal transport one, and it's also uh, it's otherwise called as N ramp two, N R A M P two, as mentioned over here. All right. Now this Fe two plus is uh, taken by the mucosal cell. Suppose we directly take uh, heme, so from the animal sources, uh, directly you can get Fe two plus, or there's something called as heme carrier protein. So this heme is being carried, uh, is actually transported to the mucosal cell, from where uh, the Fe two plus is being derived. Now usual pathway for this Fe two plus is that it's been it it is actually converted to Fe three plus, and uh, this Fe three plus along with the protein called apoferritin. This apoferritin is actually a protein, so this Fe three plus and apoferritin will fuse to form something called as ferritin, and this is the primary storage form fine. That's very very important. And second most important point is that this ferritin is soluble in it's soluble in water. Therefore, you can uh, you can check for serum ferritin levels if you uh, you know if you are uh, suspicious about iron deficiency anemia. So that's a point here, right? Now this Fe two plus, if suppose uh, the ferritin is uh, actually uh, in large quantities and uh, there's no requirement for ferritin formation, what happens now? Now this ferrit, uh, sorry, this Fe two plus. All right, it is actually pushed out of the mucosal cell, but this time it's not actually towards the apical surface, but this is towards the basolateral surface. So who is pushing that? It's actually a transporter, and this transporter name is. ferropotent now this ferropotent pumps out the excess fe2 plus from the mucosal cell to the excess cell of fluid particularly in the basolateral surface okay now uh, let's come to our blood stream okay in the blood stream uh, this iron should be carried by someone okay now this someone the mr someone is actually given a name called transferrin now this transferrin actually uh, Uh, it too has some conditions to carry Fe, and um, one of the conditions is that it can only carry two uh, iron molecules. That's why it's represented by two years over here. And second condition is that it can only transport iron in its ferric form, that is Fe three plus form. But uh, what has the ferropotent pumped out? It is uh, ferrous form, that is Fe two plus form. now somebody should be there to convert fe2 plus to fe3 plus right otherwise this uh, transferrin wouldn't carry this iron molecule so that is being done by our uh, great hafestin over here which is actually an enzyme again present in the basolateral surface and you can see uh, the contradiction of hafestin and the ferric reductase that they do opposite works and they are also present in the opposite poles of this cell that is half isten present in the basolateral surface whereas the ferric reductase is actually present in the apical surface right now this half isten has converted fe2 plus to fe3 plus now this transferrin uh, 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 the condition terms and conditions for transferrin is agreed and uh, the fe3 plus goes and uh, sits in the seat of transferrin now transferrin goes through the blood stream now where to deliver this fe3 plus molecule is a question So, in the presence of something called as the hormone, uh, the erythropoietin, which is actually uh, uh, it's actually a supporting a hormone for erythropoiesis, which increases erythropoiesis. Particularly, this is released in case of um, uh, hypoxia because of hypoxia inducible factors and all. So, this um, erythropoietin actually directs this transferrin. to uh, uh to deliver the fe3 plus that is got here to the bone marrow so that the bone marrow gets a fe um that is the iron molecule and rbcs can be generated from that because rbc requires hemoglobin and hemoglobin requires heme which again requires iron okay so uh, if uh, Or in normal conditions, if uh, there's no uh, majority dominance of erythropoietin, what happens? So in that case, what happens is that this transferrin molecule can go uh, particularly goes to uh, two areas, namely the spleen and the liver. So first, let's see the spleen and let's come to the liver later. Okay. Now 
in the spleen and the liver both are actually this sign is actually being stored in the form of hemosiderin again i told you uh, uh, like before i told you that uh, ion is stored as ferritin in the mucosal cell that is the primary storage body of ion now who is this hemosiderin this hemosiderin is actually the secondary storage form of ion okay not found in the mucosal cell but they are found in the liver and the spleen this secondary storage body actually refers from the primary storage body because this hemosiderin is not water soluble they are lipid soluble and hence you cannot estimate serum hemosiderin but you can estimate serum ferritin right because say, ferritin is only water soluble right now this hemosiderin uh, is formed now what happens here is that uh, in the spleen there is um, other mechanisms that are actually operating because uh, spleen uh, has a reticular endothelial system and the spleen is regarded as a graveyard of rbc right so rbc's die over here that is particularly the old and mature rbc's now what happens is this <clears throat> the rbc's uh, give out hemoglobin which is degraded to heme now this hemoglobin <coughs> can be transported via the blood and they can be excreted in urine right but uh, we do not see hemoglobin in normal persons urine right and this heme again can be transported to kidneys and they can be excreted in urine and but again we don't see heme in normal persons urine that means there is somebody blocking this and that's what we call it as hemopexin and haptoglobulin <coughs> so hemopexin is a beta globulin that actually blocks the uh, that is we can say that uh, it blocks the um, excretion of heme in the urine and similarly haptoglobulin is an after uh, sorry alpha 2 globulin it blocks the excretion of uh, hemoglobin in urine all right so these two show that how iron is actually stopped from excretion from our body right uh, so iron is not excreted through uh, urine that's uh, that's what i i want to say through these two uh, proteins all right now coming to the concept uh, what happens in the liver okay so we have uh, excess storage of hemosiderin now now as the hemosiderin levels rise in the liver what happens here is the liver uh, there is uh, certain genes uh, get activated in the liver and they actually produce a hormone called hepcidin so hemosiderin accumulation Uh, as it increases it will actually promote the formation of or production of a hormone called hepcidin this hepcidin being a hormone goes via the blood and it blocks the ferroportin as well as the divalent metal transporter one you can see here right this uh, green line going and blocking here and similarly this is also blocking the ferroportin so what actually i'm i i'm actually explaining here is that because hepcidin is regulating the uh, divalent metal transporter and ferroportin these are what these are entry points for ion into the body right similarly this uh, hemopexin and haptoglobulin are preventing the excretion of ion from the body so ion is not that easily excreted from the body therefore if excretion cannot be regulated uh, uh, regulated so only uh, way of uh, regulating ion uh, total ion content in the body is uh, via the uh, absorption right so uh, that's why we call ion as the one way element all right so this is uh, all about the mucosal block theory and i hope uh, you understand this and uh, the clinical scenario of uh, any uh, you know disarrangement in uh, like uh, ion absorption we actually have something called as deficiency cases we have ion um, and deficiency anemia and uh, in excess cases we have hemochromatosis and hemosiderosis thank you guys uh, let's meet in another video until then have fun thank you